Hello there, welcome back to World of Worship Legends with Durka, where today we're taking a look at the Colbert, the legendary French light cruiser. Atlanta's bigger European brother, Colbert is a Gatling gun at legendary tier, chocked full of destroyer sized guns, mounted to what I would describe as a floating Tetris block. This would have to be one of the least visually appealing ships I think I've ever seen. But maybe she's beautiful on the inside? One thing's for sure, this could be the new premier flamethrower at L tier. But does she have what it takes to dethrone the Minotaur, my favorite legendary tier cruiser? Well, stick around, let's find out. First thing is first, how did we set this ship up? Well, in slot one, we went with aiming systems mod one, but I think using the AA module wouldn't be a bad choice either. We did double rudders, and then finally in the last module slot, main battery mod three to bring the reload down a little bit. The commanders. I tested out two separate builds. One, the ship is fast and pretty agile, so we tried a full all-out agile build with Andre Rue. Burn it down XXL, all of the mobility perks and refill station. We used Muller and Acerlane Baltimore to make it even more agile, and the results were pretty darn impressive. 2.6 second rudder and a 38.5 knots top speed without the French speed boost, of which we get three with refill station. The other one I trialed was Andre Lemonier, with a focus on bringing up the fire chance using Igniter and Burn It Down XXL. Fire chance will be very important for this ship. We'll talk more about that a little bit later. Everything else I kept the same. The result, a little less mobility, but an improved fire chance that helped the damage output quite a bit. 12% fire chance here with Lemonier, as opposed to 9% with Rue. Of course, you do lose a little bit of the mobility, so if you're going to be open water, agile, cruisering it up, you have to be a little more careful. Stats-wise, HP, she's going to fall behind the Wusta and the Minotaur at 36,000, but it looks like she will have more HP than the Smolensk. On the notes of her survivability, her armor is actually pretty decent, something that we'll have to get used to after playing the socks off of the Minotaur. She has a 32mm bow, stern, and deck. Big difference from the British light cruiser. Obviously, this isn't going to help you with the Yamatos, though, <laughs> so do keep an eye out for them. As well, she comes with three base heals. They are good for 5,000 health piece. Once again, Fully Packed is going to give you one more of these consumables. Now the guns, this is where it's kind of interesting. You have 16 127 millimeter guns. These are destroyer guns, five inches, just like the Atlanta. The shells are pretty slow and floaty as we would expect. The velocity is just a little bit better than Atlanta's and it's also faster than Minotaur's AP, but they're still very floaty and can be hard to aim at longer ranges. You have a stupid fast reload of 3.1 seconds. It's going to be death by a thousand cuts for your enemies, or a thousand fires would probably be more like it. Again, with the Agile Rue build, 9%, Lemonier, 12%, and it is a noticeable difference. Without the fire chance, you are going to be shattering a lot of shells. So prepare yourself for that. Like Atlanta, the AP can be pretty good if someone gives you a nice broadside, especially more lightly armored ships like the Minotaur. AA defense is of course very good, I'm certain that's what this ship was designed for, and uh, this would be a good ship for the CVs not to go after. Not quite as good as Minotaur, but still very good, 93. So like we talked about, very maneuverable cruiser, 38.5 knots on this setup, 2.6 second rudder shift, and the tightest turning circle at the tier, over 100 meters better than the other light cruisers, Wusta and Minotaur. Concealment isn't the best with the agile build. You could put the concealment module on there and be a little more sneaky if you were so inclined. Consumable wise, the Colbert has sonar. 
and the speed boosters that are French gives a 20% boost to the speed. So if you do the math on this build, that means you could be hitting 46.2 knots in the straights. That's pretty blazing fast. And all of that combined to kind of lead me more towards the agile cruiser build. Sure, the fire chance being a little lower, it sometimes you were just working your tail off for very little damage. I've come across that a couple times, and if you go back and look, you are shattering an immense amount of shells, and that's why. But again, more agile, because I think it sets this ship apart from the Minotaur, the Smolensk, and the Wusta. All of those, they don't really have the inherent ability to be great agile cruisers, either with turning circle slow rudders or not a good top speed. On top of that, the Smolensk and the Minotaur get access to smoke screens. So rather than specking all of my light legendary cruisers to be anchor queen sitting behind an island or in a smoke screen, I thought this one could be a little bit different. More of an open water kiting boat you know to kind of scratch that itch if it should arise also on that note i apologize for <laughs> the twitchy gameplay it seems like when i'm in an agile cruiser and working on you know getting a video it, it's my head's on a swivel and uh, just trying not to get erased and so on and so forth so if it seems like i'm a little keyed up after eight or nine games playing an agile cruiser and dodging shells that's just what happens to me <laughs> but of course you do whatever build makes sense to you and whatever you find enjoyable in your playstyle. given this insane speed and mobility i don't mind at all to have her out in the open water and to use this playstyle to attract damage from the enemy team of course just because you have the most agile and fast cruiser in the lobby doesn't mean you can't also get behind an island and safely shoot from cover, which I would suggest you do at every opportunity, and we did plenty of in this game. However, don't think it's a waste to, to have an agile build and to sit behind an island, because the very next game you could be loading into crash zone and get c-spawn, and in that case you'll be very happy you chose to set her up for speed and agility. Shooting from behind an island just happens to be a bonus if you get the opportunity. Colbert does not have radar, which is a huge detriment to this ship. And the sonar isn't that great, with a 4.4 kilometer ship detection range. Destroyers are not the easiest to deal with, maybe not as easy as they would be with Alaska, Minotaur, or Wooster, and their radars. The HE shells do a lot of damage, especially combined with the blazing fast reload and the number of guns you have. As I have it figured, this should be the highest high explosive damage per minute currently in the game. I could be wrong. Now, the other caveat to remember, this is a rental ship. The devs and the community managers have already said that this might not be the final iteration of this ship. It could be a little bit different when it is finally released to us. Whether or not they will nerf or buff, we will see. I would be curious if they take away at least one of the heals or something to that effect. But overall, to me, this thing feels pretty balanced. There is no IFHE perk, and the majority of your shells are going to be shatters when shooting at legendary tier battleships. And that leaves you really to rely on that fire chance and RNG. Take this clip for instance. I think by the end of targeting this Yamato, we had over 55 target hits and not a single fire. So this is just something you will have to prepare yourself for when shooting these small caliber guns. Again, Lemonier would help a little bit with the fire chance. Overall, I think it is a fun ship, and if you are looking for something with a little bit of agility, whereas the Minotaur and the Wusta can't can't get that for you then check out the cold bear let me know what you think about her in the comments section down below i look forward to hearing from you and be sure to subscribe for future content if you haven't already all right i'll catch you in the next one see ya